New Ho King, the biggest come biggest come up of maybe all time for a restaurant. <laughs> I think for sure. It went from um, let's say anonymous. Yes. To every single fucking person that's listened to these songs knows New Ho King. Anonymous is strong, but I get what you're saying. They they had a huge come up. Yeah, anonymous is strong because of, obviously people who live here. We know about New Ho King. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Clearly, the people don't live here. Even people here. that don't live here. <laughs> that's that, what I'm yeah. saying. You don't think King is a spy. The- All right, people, welcome back. This is Samba. It's a part of the album podcast. We're talking about the music, the culture, and the internet, and how those three things intertwine. My name is Damar Grant, a.k.a. King Grant, and I'm here with my co-host, co-creator, the esteemed co-host, co-creator, Adriel Smiley, a.k.a. AdrielSmiley.com, a.k.a. Mr. Smiley, a.k.a. The Godfather. Mm-hmm. And we are here. Hopefully, everybody is subscribing to album mode, listen to this album podcast, Samba. It's and we're here to talk about the thing that literally everybody on the face of the earth is talking about. You cannot go on Twitter. You can't go on Instagram. You can't go on TikTok. You can't go to a work meeting. <laughs> you, can't, you can't step outside. You can't turn on your phone mm-hmm. without somebody talking to you about the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef that has escalated <sighs> to the point that it is over. <laughs> it has been. Well, I believe that it's over. Whether or not it actually is over is yet to be seen. Yes, yes. But we've gotten to a point now where Drake and Kendrick Lamar, they went full tilt. We Our previous episode on Soundbites, we were talking about euphoria. That feels like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of information that we have, alleged information, alleged yes. information that we have known or gotten to learn about each of the combatants. I'm saying combatants because even on Wikipedia, if you go to this like Wikipedia page about the Drake and mm-hmm. uh, Kendrick Lamar feud, it now is they display it as like a war, like they're using the same template that they use for like World War Two. One hundred percent. So um, yeah, I think the two combatants have been at it. Um, I was a person that was Kendrick Lamar inclined. Mm-hmm. I famously said that if if J Cole was in this beef, he would get rolled. Drake, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I have a material lower than, than J. Cole when it comes to lyricism. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even have to, I, I felt as though I didn't need to mention him uh, in a serious serious battle whether or not he would get rolled. I, I did think that Kendrick Lamar would, I did think that Drake would have the weapon of the hit song mm-hmm. to defeat Kendrick Lamar. But as things have unfolded, I don't think that that's going to happen uh, at all. Yeah, I think going back to our first first talk about this when Like That dropped in mm-hmm. March, it's now six weeks this beef has been going on. Wow. And we both took Drake out of it. If you go back to the clips we posted, our talk about it, we said, J. Cole and Kendrick, these are two formidable opponents. Drake, stand over here. <laughs> that's better for you. Now, clearly what we said... Did not reach He's their not ears. To us. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't involved in that. And I want to go back and kind of take us through time because I'm going to bring this up more than once. I said in an earlier episode, what is going to win this battle? Is it going to be lyrics? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be exposing someone? Is it going to be the hit song? And you, One thing you did discount was mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar saying that I'm blacker than you would not work. I, I, I think that's the least of thing that worked of all the things he said about Drake. I think there's things that worked a lot more than that. I think if that, if that was the main thing here, yeah. I don't think we'd be here. But I would say that it was a weapon. He did use that no, as he, a weapon multiple times. No, he, he did for sure. And, and I, I think why I brought up all those things is of all the weapons that they both used, we're seeing which ones worked and which ones didn't. Yeah. And I think that if we go back to the beginning, when push-ups came out, what Drake was doing a lot of was asking Kendrick to come outside. He said, Kendrick, you know, we were waiting for you. Come outside. And then he dropped Taylor Made Freestyle, mm-hmm. which, of course, you were not a huge fan of. No. And Most people were not. I'm happy to be on the right side of history for I that. think uh, back, those two back-to-back was like, okay, where's Kendrick? And it was a few weeks. And we sat here and said, it, what happens if Kendrick doesn't drop? Will he drop? Mm-hmm. And you said, I did say that. Give him more time. I did say that. The boogeyman is coming. I did say that. Give him more time. Remember, I'm always right. I'm not (laughs) going to go that far, ever. 
Um, but I'll say this. I think that the time in between push-ups and euphoria is going to be remembered very differently as history goes on. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if euphoria had come right after push-ups, no, it's a sliding doors moment of how this battle evolves mm -hmm. from then. But euphoria came out on the 30th and then... The uh, 30th of? April. Okay. And 616 in LA came out uh, a few days later. Okay. And euphoria, I think, was a right step from Kendrick. I think waiting for a long time, it, it kind of took some of the fire off of it because if you listen to Euphoria now, to me, one of the, one of the better songs of this whole beef. I agree. And Euphoria is the, f I'm, I'm going to say it a few times on here, but Euphoria is one of the first moments where I said Kendrick Lamar made the right move because that is something that I've been thinking about through this whole beef, re-listening to all these songs in order that they came out, mm -hmm. listening to them off the internet now that we've heard all the songs. I think in terms of quality of songs, this beef was closer. But I think in terms of right moves strategically, that's where it's not close at all. Yeah, I think that Kendrick Lamar's um, ability to understand timing mm -hmm. is what won him the beef. Uh, I agree. By, by a big degree. I think the idea of allowing the distance to breathe, I do think he was planning. Mm -hmm. It seems very obvious to me that he started to plan what he wants to do because after um what was it 616 yeah. in LA which was just I don't know I remember being online when that came out and everybody was looking for what what happened on June uh June yeah. 6th uh or June 16th yeah. and, you know like people people dying like the Tupac's I think it was like Tupac's birthday and then there was also um the OJ, the OJ trial, yep. you know, the OJ, the death mm -hmm. of OJ's wife, OJ's trial. It was a plethora of things. And mm -hmm. people were digging in, trying to, you know, it was getting to a point where people were just like figuring out like the most random shit and trying to connect the numbers, which was fun. And then um, after that, what came, what came next after that? After? 616. That's when Family Matters came out. Then Family next. Matters came out, which I want to say... Um, was extremely strong. That was actually a, mm. an amazing diss track. I think that when Drake dropped that, it was like, oh, wow, he actually came, like, came for Kendrick Lamar. I think one of the things that Drake made a mistake mm -hmm. with Family Matters was um, he still perceived it as being one versus 20. Mm -hmm. Because if you, I'm just using the one versus 20, mm -hmm. you know, analogy that we're using was because he dissed, in that track, he went for Rick Ross. Yeah. He went for Metro again. Yeah. Future again. Um, the, weekend. the Weekend. again. ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky again. And then he reserved this, like, last two minutes mm -hmm. for Kendrick Lamar, right? And I think he didn't understand that. I, I think he didn't understand or wasn't paying attention. Because there's no way. Because Kendrick Lamar didn't make his, his shit about anybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just Drake. J. Cole, you didn't even mention J. Cole leaving. He's just like, whatever. J. Cole, what, who cares? Drake has so many missteps in this battle that I, I've seen Drake fans trying to give him grace for. And I'm, I just really can't. I just it, think he made a mistake. I think he made several mistakes. Yeah, several mistakes. I think if, uh, where I'm starting from is push-ups. We'll go back to push-ups one more time. Really? Because after push-ups, he's baiting out Kendrick. On the end of Taylor Made, he talks about... You got 10 records ready to go. Drop them. Let's get started. So in that, I can assume Drake has some understanding of what he's getting into. We heard all the records of the, of the, of the Kendrick records. This you know, record that's 20 minutes long. That seems like it's a mix of what we've gotten so far. Yeah. And so if Drake says it to us, to his team, Kendrick got 10 records coming. Where was Drake's 10 records? <laughs> and I, it felt to me as if Drake thought this nuke he had would be the nuke no matter what Kendrick had. And I think that Kendrick had a plethora of records and clearly a game plan that I don't think Drake was ready for. Exactly. I think there was, I think Family Matters for Drake, that mm. was the nuke. Yeah, I think so too. He th I think he thinks that was me pressing the button. I'm mm. pressing the button right now because he went for everybody, had a music video. Yep. Had a whole ass music video where he went to New Ho King, mm -hmm. fucking ate the <laughs> fried rice. Big shout out New Ho King. Uh, all, New Ho King, the biggest come biggest come up of maybe all time for a restaurant. <laughs> I think for sure. Went from um, let's say anonymous, yes, 
to every single fucking person that's listened to these songs knows New Hope. Anonymous is strong, but I get what you're saying. They're, they had a huge come up. Yeah. Anonymous Miss is strong because of, obviously people who live here, we know about New Hope. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Clearly, the people who don't live here. Even Kendrick people here. that don't live here. <laughs> people that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. You think King is a spy. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of anonymous mm-hmm. to becoming uh, uh, world famous is probably aggressive, but world known. World famous, I think, is right. Yeah. Um, and to go from. So when Drake feels like he pressed the button, right? It seemed as though because there's a music video, he had the lyrics literally in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Because he wants everybody to know the lyrics. To go from that, then I, this is where I'm like, I think Kendrick was like really, really planning this shit because uh, Family Matters comes out. 50, it was like literally like 20 minutes later, mm-hmm. uh, Kendrick Lamar is dropping Meet the Grams. Yeah. Right? Completely sucking the air out of uh, Family Matters completely. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because you go from that straight into the Kendrick. Everybody was, okay, Family Matters, like, oh, wow, blah, blah, blah. It's like Kendrick just dropped. Oh, and then they listen to the Kendrick song where yeah. Kendrick is basically writing a letter to Adonis. Yep. Drake's mom. Mm-hmm. Drake's dad. Yep. Drake. It was crazy. And it had this really eerie, like this really, really eerie fucking piano it made mm. people unsettled. Like you see all these videos of people being like, this is weird. Mm-hmm. Or like they felt they felt unsettled, and that's on purpose. Yeah. And he basically just stomped on the Family Matters release, which I do think Drake thought, like, this is it. I'm about to drop this shit. And I think listening to all those songs now, a few days later, mm-hmm. that to me is move to that Kendrick did right. And I don't think that I, I can say that, how is Drake supposed to know Kendrick would do that? Like, I, you know, you can assume what he's going to say in these records. He has these records. But I think that the move of dropping it right afterwards, it's almost like Family Matters never happened. Yeah, yes, and, yeah. And and it was good. It, that song is good. It, <laughs> Family Matters is probably a better actual song than Meet the Grams. Yeah, it is. And I, and I think that Meet the Grams really neutering it, like, at the tip, basically, yeah. is the version of Meek Mill saying Drake got peed on. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, nope, we don't care. Mm-hmm. Because I think the, the nuke of uh, Drake alleging that Kendrick puts hands on his wife I had a kind of a really sad moment hearing that song because once the song was done and I realized this is what his big reveal was, Mm -hmm. I sat back and I said, I don't know if hip hop is going to care. And I've mentioned it on this show so many times with people like Dr. Dre and Kodak Black. XXX Tentacion. And I I think that that's another mistake Drake made, which I can't really fault him for because I maybe think I can understand how he thought they might care it being Kendrick. Yeah because of his stature and what he means to people. But as soon as the song was done, I, I had like a moment. I said, I don't, Drake underestimated the morality of hip hop as a whole. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I think that's something that like we're kind of ignoring here. But I, to me, that's something that was not the bomb it should have been, was not the bomb it could have been. And Kendrick neutered that right away. And so let's, let's get to that. Family Matters where mm-hmm. he says, okay, um, you put hands on your wife. He alleges that the kid is not his. Yeah, he also uh, attacked uh, Kendrick's blackness, which I did mention earlier. Yes. With the blackness, the blackness thing became a thing. Like it, we're it, talking about who is black, what it means to like mm-hmm. uh, for Kendrick Lamar to to love a black woman, yeah. whether or not he loves his wife, and if he uh, he's married to or Drake likes to allege yeah. that they're still, you know, fiancés, mm-hmm. uh, that she's mixed and his kid, obviously, is Both going to Both light-skinned kids, yeah. Exactly. So Drake is like, oh, but is, are you afraid to even be seen next to me, seen next to mm-hmm. them? I feel like our kids would be, you know, cool together, but are you okay with that? So he definitely made an attack at the blackness he, yeah. of, of Kendrick Good Lamar, um, which I would say... In the, I would say within mm-hmm. the, the context of the beef. This is everything we're saying context of the beef. is within the context of the beef. Uh, was a good attack because Kendrick Lamar loves to say, mm-hmm. I am I am blackness. The music I make is black music. Yeah. So attacking his blackness was a good strategy. I think it was a good strategy. And I think this is, to me personally, where the beef went downhill in terms of me enjoying it as much. Mm-hmm. Because this is where it started where... We had both sides of the internet believing some and not believing the other. Right. And I thought... Oh, that's the best part. 
Keep going. And I, and I, I thought, to me, I'm like, this is where, we're, where it's getting unfair because I think if we're going to look objectively, Kendrick has won this beef objectively. Yeah. I think if you're really being real yourself, as big a Drake fan as any of you want to be, Drake, Drake is not winning this battle by any means. There's no metric to have Drake winning this battle. Mm -hmm. And I think that why I mentioned the Kendrick Lamar sprinkle is that this news about Kendrick Lamar is damning. If, if we're going to just assume everyone's true until proven otherwise, yeah. this, this is, is damning information. Not just because it's violence against women, but Kendrick has been this moral compass for hip-hop as a whole for the last decade. And to see someone who's been the moral compass of hip-hop have these allegations against him is a pretty big deal. And I, I thought that there was not that nuance of the Kendrick Lamar fans to give him the win and hold him accountable. Because I don't think the allegations need to not be true for Kendrick to be the winner. I think even if they are true, Kendrick is still the winner. And I think that this is one of those deals where two things can't be true. He can have done these horrible things, mm -hmm. but also have slapped Drake's ass in this, <laughs> in this battle. Both things can be true here. Yeah, that's true. I think that a lot of people, a lot of people, I would say a lot of women mm -hmm. that are more in touch and more understanding of the situation of wrote, like these really, really good articles about mm -hmm. like, but you know, women being the butt of the joke in, in yep. this entire beat, which it's true. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. The, yeah. the entire thing comes around, comes down to whether or not somebody puts hands on women, mm -hmm. whether or not somebody is messing with underage girls. Yep. Not women, underage girls. Yeah. And whether or not any of it is true. And how can I make fun of the way the other person treats women better? Basically, that's but, what it came down to. And and the thing that I've been kind of screaming for the past few days is this is not coming from a place of trying to protect women. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think hip hop, even though we've won and getting all these great raps, we've lost in what we represent and what we stand behind. Because this is not from a place of Kendrick is trying to save these women who Drake is apparently having a sex trafficking ring. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is for. This is to embarrass Drake. And if they get saved, they get saved. If they don't, they don't. Right. And, the, and the same goes for, for Whitney. Drake is not trying to save Whitney from terror. He, mm -hmm. he just wants to embarrass Kendrick. And if this is in the process. And I think, too, like you had a great tweet where you said, whoever has receipts first wins. That's really, I think, where we're at. And this <laughs> yeah. is, even though I think Kendrick's already won. Yeah. In a sense, I think the receipts may change a bit of, a bit of that. But I think that why we put middle, women in the middle of this is like, what are these receipts going to be? Are we asking, actually, for Whitney to come forward and talk about her experience? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's inappropriate. Are we seeing that one of these young young girls that Drake is apparently involved with, they must come forward and tell us what happened? Mm -hmm. I think that's inappropriate as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, this is where this beef has become, where we're all asking for receipts, which I think, that's, what, what else do we, what else could we want? And so it's like, we want the only thing that will solve this, which we shouldn't even be in a position that this is what we need. Right. And I, and I think- True. <laughs> that's very true. And so I think that like, this goes back to the J. Cole thing of, as an internet mob, we said, J. Cole, go get him. Yeah. Go rap at him. And J. Cole has internet access like all of us do. <laughs> and he saw that and said, all right. I'm out. <laughs> and, but he went in first. Yeah. And then hopped out. And I think the same goes with, with Drake and Kendrick where how much episodes did we have where we said, whoever exposes the best is going to win this battle. Yeah. And I, I'm sure Drake and Kendrick saw all of those things and went and did their dirt. So... I thought that was a great move by Kendrick to step on Family Matters. Yeah. But I think that this is where the he said, he said really, really began is these two tracks back to back. Yeah, I agree. I think that then we went to, uh, so after that, mm -hmm. within our timeline, we went to, I think, probably one of the best or one of the, I'm going to say, I'm going to think mm. one of the best hip hop tracks that maybe in the history of the genre. Oh, just straight. Okay, yeah, wow. I think because of the, utter damage that it did to Drake's reputation, which I do think mm -hmm. this is going to be a, a big, big time reputation. Remember yeah. that Kendrick Lamar is making a song alleging mm -hmm. I'm trying to protect it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alleging that Drake is a pedophile. Right. Alleging that Drake likes some young. Um, and saying, you know, things like OV Ho, protect, uh, don't let your... if you love Drake not to keep your... Uh, if you love your kids, they'll keep him around Drake. Or your younger sisters, right? So this alleging of Drake being... Alleging mm -hmm. <laughs> of Drake um, being involved with minors 
is so utterly damning when somebody like Drake is affiliated with so many corporations. Yeah. Like, I think that that is something that is being underplayed is that Drake is a partner with Nike. He's part of UMG. Um, like, he's partnered with so many corps. Yeah. And for for uh, you to be for you to be Nike and, like, one of your main spokesperson person, people is a person that is allegedly mm-hmm. uh, a, allegedly a, a predator or mm-hmm. a trafficker is a nuclear bomb pr- when it comes to your marketing. Like, you listen, you're you talk- cannot deal with that. You're talking about money loss. That's a great point to bring up because... They're both Nike. This is Nike and Nike violence. <laughs> like, yeah. And so I, I like that you brought that up of like, this is, is bigger than just rap at this point because these big corporations that Drake is invested in, they're invested in Drake. It's like. UMG is probably, because remember that mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar isn't signed with anybody. Yeah. So he's just, he's licensed through mm-hmm. UMG, but Drake has like this allegedly nine figure deal mm-hmm. with UMG and like a record labels. This is a big business issue now like. and, and, and uh, <laughs> i think there's this there's this part of the of the he said she said because not only is kendrick alleging crazy things that drake one of my favorite lines it's crazy some of my favorite lines but this is a great bar mm-hmm. he says um how many ops you really got i mean it's too many options i'm gonna pass on this body i'm john stockton bars beat your ass and hide the bible if god watching bars and <laughs> there's so much bars on here that slap and it's like even Horrible. as a drake fan it's like there's some parts on here where it's how are you not going to bump to this? And that the the big, big line that I think is going to go up at every day party for the next month at least is trying to strike a chord and it's probably A minor. minor. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we can even do that just like that mm. shows how catchy that por- that portion is. Mm-hmm. I remember when I heard that for the first time. Let's do So mm. this we're talking about Not Like Us. Yeah. Um, which also... I just want to throw this out there. Mm. Uh, when the Minnesota Timberwolves were destroying the Denver Nuggets, this was playing in the commercial breaks. And it, and it came out, like, right before the game. Just to show, like, I really want to show people how much of a cultural moment this mm-hmm. is. Like, this is such a huge, huge deal, this song. Mm. Um, that quotable, like, A minor, the John Stockton line. Mm -hmm. um, Certified lover boy. Certified lover boy, certified pedophile. The wop, 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 right? Um, What else? Uh, There's so many. Even even on the earlier songs where, I think it was, Euphoria is like, what is it, the braids? Yeah. The fact that Kendrick Lamar basically stole Drake's position when it comes to um, beef where you're like, I'm just going to do the hit song. Because mm-hmm. remember, Back to Back was, it was a good diss, mm-hmm. but the fact that it was a hit song was really the thing that turned the screws because it's you can't deny it. You can't, you can deny it, but you can't not hear it. No, it no, was always no going to be played, right? And this is going to go number one, even though it came out on a Sunday. It's it's challenging right now. They announced today it's challenging right now for number one. Right, and it's challenging number one f- against his other song, Euphoria. <laughs> I, I think... When I thought about this uh, battle, one thing I want to go back to mm-hmm. is um, Drake's song "Family Matters." He has that part where he goes, uh, "Shake it for a day free." Oh yeah, and I, I think about that when we talk about the A minor line because Drake did the thing he was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. He tried to turn it into a bob. There's a part where like "Shake it for Drake," "Shake it for free." Mm-hmm. He did the right thing, but the step on from "Meet the Grams," yeah, and then the kick in the head. We're not like us. Yeah, Meet the Grams is so important. I mm. The more I think about it and the more we're having this conversation, Meet the Grams is like kind of like the turning point. Even yeah. though I feel like it's the, actually the weakest song. Yep. I think because it just totally just turned Family Matters into a gray blob. It erased it, yeah. Yeah, it erased it because it did. nobody really talks about it. But it's so, it's again, I think it's maybe the second best diss track out of all of them. Yeah, and, and the thing I, I think about that is if we fast forward now to where um, there's the heart part six, which I think was a horrible idea. Yeah. This, this is this. No, I think he still had to do it, though. I, I think this is Drake's worst move to me out of all his moves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think in the heart part six, him saying that he fed Kendrick this information. Oh, that was brutal. And, and again, it goes back to the, the he said, she said. Now, there's tons of stuff in here that from both these gentlemen that I don't want to believe or I don't believe. Mm-hmm. And I think that We've already not believed enough of this this battle that by the time the heart part six comes out, 
people are standing on their lines of, nah, I'm not, you didn't do that, Drake. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I don't believe that you are the mastermind. But I, I bring out the heart part six because the idea that Drake did feed Kendrick that information, I think would turn in his favor if Not Like Us was not out. I, I think agree. Meet the Grams, the big part of that. So obviously, there is stuff alleging that Drake is involved with young girls, but a big part of that song was this whole rhyme scheme around you have this other kid that you're hiding. Mm-hmm. And if Not Like Us had not been out and we heard Heart Part 6 where he says, that's not real, I made you believe that, Yeah, maybe the things turn in his favor. But I think after Not Like Us, <laughs> it's, it's a little too late. So I, I think about these sliding doors moments in terms of the moves that these guys made because mm-hmm. I do think music for music, it's a very close battle. But I think that the moves that Kendrick's made of – you know, you Euphoria and then 616 right away. Mm-hmm. That was that I think was a great move. I think Meet the Gram stepping on the face of Family Matters was a great move. Brilliant. That was brilliant. And then I think Not Like Us coming not even 12 hours later. Yeah. Another brilliant play. Another brilliant move. Because and it's also a hit song. It's also a hit song. And I and I think too, this is something that we're I guess giving credit for, but Drake changed the way battles go. Yeah. Kendrick took this blueprint from the I, 10. I, battles drake has been through before i was gonna say that because he telegraphed it in uh euphoria, euphoria where he says back to back i'm gonna get back to that right mm-hmm. he told him well i don't obviously he didn't like he tell t- him but he, he, to- he, he, he telegraphed told it he told him he, he told telegraphed him. it he's gonna do back to back multiple in a row right and this is something that um i'm trying to think about in hip-hop history people didn't really do that no you kind of put out your diss and then you wait for the next person they do their thing and and then you, you know, replied and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it was also slower. But I think Kendrick Lamar using the internet, like the speed of the internet was brilliant because he's like, okay, I'm going to do, the, the, you know, the one mm-hmm. track and then come back to back, then wait for him, right? Then step on it and then I'm going to do back to back again. And, and I right? think this is such a good move by Kendrick because I, I think, and Drake has no excuse to me because if we from a thousand miles away can see that Kendrick has more ready, yeah. Drake should see that. But I think, let's go back to the beginning. Euphoria to 616 is where this battle was won. Because I think that Drake thought that that was the back-to-back. Mm. And I think that that's why Not Like Us hit so so much harder. Because I think the two songs, Meet the Grams and Family Matters, if they had had both had time to breathe, and let's say those are the two songs we listen over the weekend, over the weekend... Maybe we listen a few more times and we go, okay, it's not as much of a... But I think this having those cancel each other out and Not Like Us can stand on its own. Mm-hmm. Because Not Like Us is not technically battling a song. It's standing on its own yeah. if you look at it from that perspective. So I think that the first back-to-back as being the fake-out was a great move by Kendrick because you're, you're saying, okay, this is what you mean by back-to-back. You said it in Euphoria. You dropped the song right afterwards. Mm-hmm. You're taunting me. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I see it. So to me... Not Like Us is where Drake really got flustered. Yeah. Because I, I think that um, Meet the Grams was something Drake probably knew existed. That's my that's my theory is that... Oh, I wanted to ask you Many about of that. these songs I think were already done. Yeah, so how did you... Okay. So in the hard part six, mm-hmm. uh, there's so many different ways to go in this, but the hard part six, he said that he fed Kendrick Lamar yes. the stories, right? That Kendrick Lamar then used in his diss tracks. Do you believe that he did that? I'm I'm just choosing to believe everybody, so I'm just going with yes. Ben. You 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 think he did that? Here's the thing: why I don't think he did that is I don't I don't believe that mm-hmm. because if he if Kent, if Drake had fed found some sort of mole in his mm-hmm. circle, which I do think actually exists, like yeah. I do think that Kendrick Lamar, mm-hmm. um, there is somebody in Drake's vast circle of people, which mm-hmm. is which is a problem. That Kendrick Lamar kind of had a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Make sure you, you know, if something is coming out, you just you know, mm-hmm. let me know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that um, Drake, if he had leaked this information to Kendrick, this potential information to 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 sort to like fuck up his entire like beef or mm-hmm. his entire like battle songs. Um, if he had that, then if he revealed the receipts, that would be damning. That would have completely eviscerated because he would be like, "This guy has no idea what he's fucking doing." I'm feeling, I'm, I'm creating his rap songs for him. I, right? I've, I've seen that angle, and again, I'm just choosing to believe everything. To be fair wow. to everyone, mm-hmm. just to be fair to everyone, because I think, <laughs> I think once you believe half one guy and not the other guy, yeah, 
the battle's done after that because all they're doing is trying to, you know, tell each other's lies or truth. Right. I would say the the conversations I had with people that mm-hmm. are observing. Yeah. That was something that they were everybody was saying that it's like if Drake can fals- like it could prove that he falsified the mm-hmm. song, then it, it's like a huge embarrassing moment for Kendrick Lamar. That's what every single person I know was saying that. I, I agree with that, and to me, I thought that that was what this song would be. The heart part six mm-hmm. is okay. The rumor was going around that that you did, you're the mastermind behind this, and you fed him that information. Mm-hmm. Show us so we can give you the the credit for that. Yeah, and what someone said to me, which again, this is like we're all now internet detectives and lawyers. <laughs> But someone said to me that a reason why Drake wouldn't do that is because there's there's still work to be done, and he doesn't want to show so. his hand. And, and that's what I said. And I and I and, I and I said this is where I feel like we've become too much of internet detectives and lawyers mm-hmm. because for someone to say that to me and for me to have your reaction and be like, it's like now it's like what do I know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like I'm using common sense, but what do what do I really know? Yeah, at, that's what I'm saying. At this level, it's like. This is way above my pay grade. I think that um, you you can be able to use inference. I mm-hmm. mean, anytime you read a news article, like, well, us, people like us, yeah, anytime yeah. you read a news article, <laughs> you're like, okay, there's some sort of bias or some sort of spin, yeah, right? So it's the same thing with this. It's like, okay, what's the bias? What's the spin? What's the motive, right? Mm-hmm. And I think when it comes to, like, if Drake is feeding him this info, I would have just, on the heart part six, right, I would have just exposed him. I would have made the fucking text messages the fucking album art you know that, what I mean? that seems like the obvious choice right so i because they were they've been doing that yeah they've been doing that exact motif mm-hmm. which is i i appreciate that they kind of mirrored people's motifs and stuff like that yeah, i kind of like it i like the heart part six you know is a callback to like 16 yeah or even just like the heart you know series that yeah I think they're, they're doing it with each other like he's doing timestamp records yeah, he's doing he's time doing stamp. Heart I, I like that yeah i yeah. like that um but uh i think that if that shit was true could have just like said it right around the track. I do think that Drake, so the blackness thing, mm-hmm. I think that Kendrick Lamar kind of owned him on it. Like mm-hmm. the idea of the in uh Not Like Us, where he was basically he just really just gave a history lesson in his song, where he was like, you know, back, you know, way back when we were all in chains and like Drake doubled down on it. And then he's like, let me let me break it down. Like, this is a real nigga challenge. And he expa- explained, like, you know, Atlanta's, like, when they were making, like, the chains and shit like that. Yeah. And then he goes down to, like, you know, uh, 21 here. Actually, I'll give you the lyrics directly because I'm actually looking at it. Where he goes. Uh, you run to Atlanta when you need a check balance. Yeah, you run to Atlanta, you need a check balance. Let me break it down for you. It's a real nigga challenge. It's like, okay, you call Future when you, when you didn't see the club. Lil Baby helped you get your lingo up. 21 uh, gave you fe- false street cred. Thug made you feel like a slime in your head. Quavo, you can be from North Made you, said you could be from North Side. Uh, Two Chains says you good, but he lied. You run to Atlanta when you need a few dollars. You not you not no you not a colleague. You a fucking colonizer. That was crazy. But that's what I'm talking about. The mm. blackness thing. Use the idea of like Drake, you're you're not from here, you're not fully grasping the blackness of Atlanta, like all this, all these things that you kind of just exploit. Yeah, you're not actually not an originator of it, mm-hmm. not fully un- understanding everything of it, and you're kind of just using the circle of people that I just mentioned to to make you more of a thing, but you're not actually contributing to any of this shit. Yeah, so the, to go from no, you're not a colleague. You're a fucking colonizer. Was that was a bar? Whoa! <laughs> that was, a, and, then, and then he follows up saying the family matter and the truth of the matter. It was God's plan to show y'all the liar, like to use his own song to spin it on him. No, nah, these these are crazy bars by Kendrick, and <laughs> I I I think too, like to wrap this whole thing up, and we can talk about our top three songs. Mm-hmm. Um, after this is, I I think that Kendrick won the beef, and I feel like the people who are telling me he didn't. That's delusional. I'm, I'm seeing a lack of objectivity. You're just delusional. And, and I, I think too, for me, he won, but at what cost? I, I, True. I do think that his his strategy, because my strategy, his strategy of not addressing the allegations against him mm-hmm. is working. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> and, I don't respect it, but it's working. I agree. And um, I think that I will always look at Kendrick Lamar a little iffy mm-hmm. um, until I have some kind of something from him. Yeah, but how are you looking at Drake now? 
I I always looked at Drake iffy. Drake was always. I don't know if it's even iffy at this point. It's kind of. Uh, I, I and, I and this this, this is why I said I asked your, asked your family matters. I said I don't think people really care. And I and I said this on the show before. Canceling is fake. Mm-hmm. This battle is the, you know, the example of showing you canceling is fake. Mm-hmm. Let's go back twenty years to R. Kelly, dating your girl Aaliyah, in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. She's a teenager. They they try and get married. End up getting married. He was on talk shows holding her hand. Then there was no problem. It was a different era, though. They, 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 they said, sure, write for Space Jam. Sure, do a song with Celine Dion. Who yeah. cares? Then, fast forward, this video comes out of him peeing on a teenager. Mm-hmm. I said this to Chris earlier. If you are a grown man and there is any video of you with your dick out and a teenager, mm-hmm. something is obviously not right. You're right. He gets acquitted. M- plenty of songs, plenty of albums follow that. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward to 2019. Finally, goes to jail, has this huge interview with Gail King, and the rest is history. But it, 15 years of us knowing he was this person, mm-hmm. and people still listened. And I, and I, I want to say that we're, we're progressed past that, and we're more evolved, mm-hmm. and Drake will get that same treatment. But I, I can't confidently say that. And I think Drake and Kendrick will both still be able to work and have the reputation. To, to, to us, it's sullied, I think. Yeah. But I think the history of... Again, Tupac going to, going to jail for rape and people being excited when he's getting out of jail. Yeah. And hip hop's history has shown that things like this, we turn a blind eye to. People don't really care about in the same way. Yeah. And I think that that, to me, is the takeaway from this, I guess, beef. Really? I have a different, I have a different thing to say about that. But because I think that, at least from Kendrick's side, he was claiming to be the man with the morals, who's a stand-up guy and a great father. Right. And I think that... I, I had never believed that with Kendrick. Maybe that's part of why I felt like I didn't rate him as much. I'm mm-hmm. like, he can rap, but he's a guy. Like, mm-hmm. And I think that seeing this now, that a lot of his fans believed that as well and thought that he was that guy who can do no wrong, is this. And I'll say, like, if someone has enough money, usually they're going to be a shitty person. And <laughs> facts, I, and, that is a fact, though. And, and I, that's, that's where I came in this, is that these two basically, you know, like Fight Club fought to the death almost. Yeah. And who can smear, smear, the, smear the other's name? So I'm happy that we that we got this beef from a, a competitive standpoint. And, and these Kendrick records are some of my favorite Kendrick records ever. Yeah. Uh, these are going to live on uh, these Euphoria and uh, Not, Not Like, like us. us. Yeah, those, those are the two. Are, those are going to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, when we talk about Hall of Fame, to be like, yo, you see those two championships? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these those, these those, these are it. Yeah, yeah, those are two big, and those are also um, solo number ones. Yeah, so it's not like uh, you know, there's no stimulus, nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just off off the strength. As a, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not, off the strength. It's not really off the strength, but I get what you're saying. It's, it's not really off the strength, but I get what you're saying. Um, my my takeaway from this uh beef, I'm trying to make sure that we we hit a lot of mm-hmm. the things that I want to talk about. But I think for me, one of the things that I, I really noticed and people have been talking about, I think DJ SB. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Big shout out DJ. Yeah, shout out DJ uh, doing brilliant work. Showed, they, they were talking about um, how Drake had kind of lost women mm-hmm. in his fandom. Yeah. Right? Drake is, you know, Drake's original moniker was like Heartbreak mm-hmm. Drake. Yeah. Right? And he had a ton of girls following him. That's kind of why people thought he was soft, mm-hmm. didn't realize, you know, or didn't think that he was like really valuable to hip hop, all that type of shit. And I think I noticed, like, obviously, uh, Deja saw that mm-hmm. the women in Drake's fan base had kind of dispersed. Uh, and I even had a friend who, um, I want to say in like 2018, she was a massive Drake fan, mm-hmm. OVO everything. And then in the past couple of years, she was like, I, I just, I can't deal with this Drake shit anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I even seen it anecdotally. But one thing I noticed was like a hollowing of Drake's fandom. Mm-hmm. Where it before it seemed like Drake, like he could lose a beef, mm-hmm. which he did. He lost it with Pusha T. Um, he could be mocked for being too soft. Yeah, He could be uh, mocked for always crying about girls and stuff like that. And he was still immensely popular. Mm-hmm. Right? Because, yeah, I wouldn't describe it as he had a thick fan base, mm-hmm. right? And then over time, that fan base started to thin where, like, less women are supporting him. And women in hip, women, first of all, black women, anything that a black woman says about culture is pretty much like that is what it is. That's, that's law. <laughs> yeah, that's like basically your gospel for what it, for whatever it is. And black women are like, Drake, 
Drake is it. And I just seen it over time, just like black women just disperse. It eroded. Yeah, yeah, it just eroded and eroded to this point where like, you know, Drake's, I think on Scorpion, people were, you had black women writing think pieces about like the misogyny of Drake and stuff like that. Like it's misogyny and hip hop's not new, mm-hmm. but for Drake, it was something coming like, why is this happening to the guy that we all loved? Yeah. And I think over time, it just hollowed and hollowed where we got to For All the Dogs, where misogyny in Drake's music, people are talking about, he sounds so paranoid all the time. Mm. You know, the lesbian line, which, you know, we were like, whatever. But it was, yeah. it was, a, it was a groaner. And mm. obviously, you're losing more people. And I think that now you see that Drake's fandom or just like his circle has become hollow. The people like Future, 21, right? Mm. Metro. These were people that he collaborated with all the time. Those people have dispersed. Mm -hmm. His fan base of black women, they've started to disperse, right? The women overall just leaving the Drake camp. Then you're just starting to see like Drake is on the top, but he's kind of like, I don't want to say a paper tiger, but he's kind of like, he became a paper tiger in a way. Right, where anytime somebody wants to stand next to him, mm. get number one, that's the tiger, because you know the tiger is yeah. fucking the tiger. Mm. But then we get this; we're getting one rap battle. I will say that it's one of the greatest rappers of all time. Both mm. of them are, but one of the greatest rappers of all time is like actually. Let me just take a little closer look at what this guy is doing. Yeah, and it basically just blew to smithereens. Yeah, and I didn't think that something like that would happen to Drake because we've grown up knowing Drake for so long that it just seems like. We've said it this a million times. It's mm-hmm. too big to fail. I think that's gone. Yeah. I think that... I don't want to say it, but I think that we might be seeing the downfall now, actually. Legitimately. I, I think it's already begun, honestly. I think Not Like Us was the nail in, in the coffin yeah. on that one. And I think this is something that someone mentioned to me in one of those, again, work meetings that ends up being about Drake <laughs> and Kendrick. Um, someone said to me, is Drake going to end up being Jack Harlow? And... Mm. I loved that comparison because Jack Harlow is someone who's very successful, clearly very popular, but Jack Harlow's fan base isn't a part of the hip hop culture. Yeah. And I think that that may be where Drake ends up in all this, where he still has popular songs, still has songs you hear hear out, but that bass, and I mentioned it when we did our, our Yeet review of that bass that Kendrick took a shot at of Atlanta. That's been how Drake has stayed relevant all these years. Yeah. Is having the future co-sign, the 21 Savage co-sign, the Migos co-sign. And now I think about it, you know, he did that whole tour with 21 Savage, did that whole tour with the Migos, a whole tour of future. Who's Drake on the tour with now? Like who's left yeah. for him to tour with? And so when who's from Toronto is co-sign. Who, who another thing I was mentioning is like mm-hmm. from Toronto, who co-signs Drake from Toronto right now? Seriously. Nobody. Real shit. Nobody. Um you would think from your city, some but a, a place that I would say mm-hmm. Drake has put global eyes on. You would think that that person would be like everybody, would be like that's my guy. No, Drake's my guy. They always talk bad about Drake, but I feel even in the city, mm-hmm. Drake is kind of just like eh. people are. People are are being quiet about yeah. supporting Drake openly. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're talking a bit about what hip hop is going to be after this battle. Mm-hmm. I want to know what are your top three songs in this battle. If you had to rank them okay. out of this whole battle. Top three songs. I think Not Like Us is, for me, Mm -hmm. Lear number one. Okay. Lear, clear, clear number one. I mean, it's going to go number one. It's this song or Euphoria, which Euphoria is my Mm -hmm. number two. (laughs) I think that uh, Not Like Us is a hit track. It has quotables. Mm -hmm. It's got um, fun rhyme scheme. The DJ Mustard beat, that West Coast, the song is so West Coast. Yes. um, Is impeccable. Got a nice history lesson in there. I'm not going to discount the actual, there's an actual message to it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a diss track, so every diss track <laughs> has a message to it. But you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Um, And then there's actually, you know, like the OV hole, like the chants in it. Oh. You know, the like it's got so much shit in it. I feel like the OV hole thing, he could have actually done that another time. Like, I feel like he did that only. He did it a little too late, too. He could have done it earlier. Maybe. Maybe. He could have done it earlier. I feel like that could have actually been fleshed out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it could have been better. This is already, I would consider a masterpiece disc record. Yeah. Um, but it could have actually even been better. And then I would say Euphoria. I mean, I feel like he just can't he came for everything. I think mm-hmm. it was more of a methodical attack. Mm-hmm. Um, even though the the beat was more menacing. I felt like the uh, things that he was attacking was more it's more of a slow place. Um, he wasn't really digging as deep, even though he kept saying that I couldn't go deeper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even on Not Like Us, he said. 
I can go deeper. Yeah. So I, I don't want to test that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think Euphoria. And then um, Family Matters mm-hmm. is actually number three. I think that that back two minutes where it's just the violin or the cello or whatever mm-hmm. string instrument that is, um, I think that that was destructive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like actually... That should have been the whole song. Like, to be honest, for me, if he made that two minutes and ma- took that two minutes and stretched it for the six minutes or mm-hmm. seven minutes, however fuck long that song is, and made that the whole song, we'd actually be talking about a much closer... Yeah, because um, I, I think even the drill part in yeah. the middle, which I do like a lot, I just think it wasn't fit for this. Yeah, like the production style of that one, that last two minutes mm-hmm. was like so menacing, so dark. and Yeah. So, it was... It was it was like, you know, I, I finally mean business. Here, if the it, here song it comes. started with that, yeah. different energy. Yeah. 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 It was it was dark in a in a in a in a very sinister way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you misplayed that a little bit. But uh the rest of it was great. The music video was fantastic. Mm-hmm. New Ho King, shout New Ho King. Maybe we should go to New Ho King. We should. Well <laughs> the lives are getting long now. I, I know. <laughs> I, I was in the air, thought about going because I told you that was one of my spots back in the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, the lines are getting long. I said, "Y'all ruin you, Ho King." I know Toronto loves a good line. <sighs> Toronto <laughs> loves a good line. They do love a good line. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's my top three. What about you? I think for me, number one is gonna be Euphoria. Okay, Euphoria. The more I listen to it, everyone's talking about no replay value. When I said, "Okay, we're recording the same day. Mm-hmm. Let's wait about this," I think everyone was wrong. Yeah, tons of replay value on, on Euphoria, and then I would probably put. Um, not like that, and then no, no, not like us, and then like that as my third. Ooh, like that. I, I are you counting like that? Okay, for sure. Like that is a like that's when the six weeks started. Like, <laughs> yeah, like gotta count like that. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think not like us is something I would definitely try and crip walk at a day party too in the summertime. Yeah, you know, and there's not many songs that fit that exact mold <laughs> that are out right now. And then like that, still like. Like that, I think, was when I had a feeling that this was not going to go how Drake thought it was going to go. Mm-hmm. And I think Drake raising his voice and yelling at Kendrick about coming outside made me think, okay, Drake must know what Kendrick has ready. Because he didn't. But like that still bangs. Like, I think like that is probably the hardest one if you're a Drake fan to not rap along to. <laughs> That's so true. Um, but those, those are, the, those are the, uh, the three for me. Okay. So I think that, who do you think won? I think it's pretty obvious. I think it's obvious. Yeah. I think if you don't think that Kendrick Lamar won, you're kind of in denial. Like, I don't really see how he... I don't see how he did not win. No, he he definitely... I think what I said before about if you're going the records all as a whole... Yeah. Drake... All of Drake's records are good records. Yeah. I think the heart part six is extremely tone deaf. And yeah, that I one didn't, sucks. That was actually genuinely I didn't good. need that, but he's... The beat is good. He's rapping well. That if you want to go that route, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I think Kendrick won this one... I don't think it was actually that close. Me neither. I don't think it's. I don't think we're done. To be fair. Wait. I, okay. What do you mean by that? Do you think there's gonna be more direct diss tracks? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Maybe there's gonna be like sneak. I you know. Think there will be. I think there will be another track or two, but it will be a different tone because I like recording this on on the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Drake just took shots at his home, not himself, but. Shots were fired at his home. Oh, yeah, we didn't home. even fucking mention that. Oh, my yeah, God, we shot, didn't even mention <laughs> Yeah, shots were fired at his home. Yeah. And as of now, we well, don't... Hold on, hold on. Give, give it a little bit more. We did uh, not mention that. Sorry, okay. So in Toronto at his house on, on Bridal Path. They're saying it was a drive-by. Yeah. His security guard was shot um, above the chest. They went into surgery at the hospital. We don't know what happened with the surgery yeah. as of now. We, we don't, don't know, know who if did it. We don't know if it's related as of now. But all we know is that it was a drive-by mm-hmm. and one of his security guards was shot. So I think that that just being something that happened, you know, Top Dog had a, a very cryptic tweet about mm-hmm. it, not not claiming credit for it, but mm-hmm. not being very sympathetic. And so I think that whatever comes out about this shooting will end up on wax somewhere. Mm-hmm. And whether it's Ken, because I, I think Kendrick is going to have to either be like, this is not me, still fuck you and your whole team, mm-hmm. but we didn't shoot at you. And I think that if that is not the case, will Drake assume that is Kendrick? And will this be so? That that's my thing. I think this 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 shooting as well as well as I don't think Drake wants to end on the heart part six. I think after what happened, with Pusha T, that's some, that's like a, a core memory in the worst way of <laughs> yeah. like everyone saying you lost. Like I I kind of would rather him 
go out swinging, or I think he would rather himself go out swinging, and Kendrick does not respond to him. Be like, okay, we're done. Like, yeah. So I I do think we're gonna get at least one more track because I do think the shooting at Drake's house, um, whether it's related or not, the timing of it is yeah, just sticky. Yeah. yeah. So I think that I don't think this is gonna be another track. I just think we're at the point now where it feels done. It does feel done. Like to me, it it does. But that's, it feels I think that's done, what... and I think that like. If we're releasing more, I just think for most people, the mm -hmm. way they view it, because I do think the way people are viewing the beef also in mm -hmm. influences what happens in the beef, obviously. Yeah. If we're doing more songs, it's going to feel like it's Dragon. And it's I, going to feel like it's Dragon. And TDE is is putting out you know cryptic statements saying, great battle, job well done. Mm -hmm. They're acting as if the battle is done. So... I, that this next few days, I think, will be the test. Of, if it's not in the next few days, by the end of the week, yeah. then it's probably done. But I do think that we're taking Drake's house being shot at lightly, mm -hmm. and I don't know that Drake will take that lightly. I think when not like <laughs> when not like us came out and we're all screaming, "Certified lover boy, certified pedophile!" Yeah, and then his house gets shot at. Like I think that he, Drake's already showing he's on the defensive. Yeah, he's already been pretty emotional. So. I think there's going to be some kind of record around that, whether it's Drake making the record or Kendrick just being like, you still trash, but we didn't shoot at you. Yeah, okay. So wait, wait to see. All right. So is this the beginning of the end? Is this the end of Drake? Is this the beginning of the end? Because we talked about, I talked about the hollowing thing, mm -hmm. and I really think that's like a real thing. Like who has, I don't know, anybody who has Drake's back. I don't know anybody that has Drake's back right now. Seriously, I, I think you're right. And even the weekend, the guy from his own city. No, the weekend is super beefing. Yeah, super beefing. So there, I don't know if there's who has his back, like Lil Wayne, Lil ba Wayne? Baka, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm think sorry. So. I'm sorry. Um, I think you're actually right. And let's go back to my Jack by Jack Harlow point. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Drake will become. I think Drake's run has been not just the pop stuff. It's not just only when he does something to Khaled, it's a hit, or only this type of songs. Like, his sustained run has been, he's had the streets down. Like, Kendrick had this great song with Future. Drake has been doing great songs with Future for half a decade at this yeah. point. And so now that that's going to be actually done, and there's no more Ross records, no more Metro, maybe 21 Savage. But I think that part of Drake's career will be over with. And so how I'm kind of describing it is, if you think of For All the Dogs... We're only gonna get the second half. That mm. that first half, the original album, with all that street talk, my, we're not getting that. I don't think anymore. But I think the lyrical red button Drake, yeah, maybe we'll get more of more of that. But I, to me, this is like a clear change in hip hop history going forward because I I think that Kendrick, it's the most we've seen him drop in years. Yeah, facts. <laughs> all, all at once. <laughs> This is his biggest solo success, basically, in years. And I think that I'm ready to see all these guys prove that they can do what Drake does. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if that's the case. We're going to find out. But I think that a lot of these rappers, they have big hits that might be hits in the club or in the street or online. But on the actual Billboard charts, that's where Drake has made his bed. And now I think there's going to be a big space for... The Futures, the Metros, the Kendricks of the world. Or even a new person. Or even someone new to take that space. And I think that um, we're going to see. We're going to see how that goes. I think that it's got, that's going to be the biggest thing of if these guys struggle, they're going to be like, where's Drake? We miss, we miss Drake's music. We miss him being at the top of the charts. Are there going to be sounds that no one is doing anymore because Drake is not around? Or are we going to see people just kind of redo Drake's sound in a sense? Yeah. So I'm interested to see because... Hip hop has, has changed so much over the past six weeks. Yeah, and I'm interested to see where it goes from here. Yeah, I think that this is. I mentioned it last podcast. I'm like, this is a, this is a moment in hip hop history, and yeah. it's actually maybe even escalating to a moment in music history, depending it, it's, on. It's already. This is the biggest hip hop beef ever. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, and depending on what happens to Drake afterwards, because I again, Kendrick Lamar won. Mm -hmm. So depending on what happens to Drake afterwards, can alter what music is like, what sounds like going forwards who is the hit maker all that type of shit because drake lost again drake lost everybody everybody abandoned him and and, and even his own city to a degree abandoned him. and everyone abandoned him and i think too what i realized from this but i already knew this but i think more people hate drake than like kendrick and so it's not an automatic that kendrick will get those fans and he'll be the new 
hit maker. Mm-hmm. I think there's more people who li- I just don't like Drake more than I love Kendrick. Because a lot of people who are saying Kendrick won, who still say they hate his voice, <laughs> still still don't like his raps. Right. And I think that this may be a, like we're happy you took down Drake, but it's not like I don't I don't know. And we're gonna we're gonna wait and see. But I don't know how many people are be like, oh, I listen to Kendrick now. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Um, we could even see Kendrick if Kendrick. Uh, wanted to release an album at any time in the near future, this would be the moment. Because they, the it, rumor is me. So. It, yeah, it's going to go through the roof. Yeah. Um, And I think that this is the biggest beef or biggest mm. battle in hip-hop history. Yeah. This dwarfs literally anything else because of its immediacy. Mm-hmm. And also, it was, it was cataclysmic. Like, I felt like any... You couldn't go to sleep. You literally couldn't go to sleep because if you went to sleep, you were going to miss... Somebody releasing one of their tracks. It got to a point where you could not sleep, nah, my guy. I'm telling you right now, when when I got that text from you in all capitals saying <laughs> get on the internet, <laughs> the little little bit of panic that came into my yeah, I'm like get moment. on the internet. What are you doing? Like it got to a yeah, it got to a point where you could not sleep. Um, I do think that that was an excellent strategy by Kendrick Lamar because mm. he was the person I was doing that the most. Where it's like. You could not sleep because you're like, Kendrick Lamar might release music, so I can't go to sleep. So the anticipation Mm -hmm. was always high for whatever he released. I think that Drake was not fully seeing that. Like, I just think that Drake was not seeing that. Yeah, I don't know what Drake was (laughs) seeing. I don't know what Drake was seeing. I don't know what Drake was thinking uh, throughout this entire beef. Um, I do want to say... Kendrick Lamar goat is sounding very. It's sounding very uh, not not foreign right Br- now. Bring up bring up those receipts because I did say that like in a month they're going to be calling him the goat. Yeah, yeah. I, I I guess what this is going to eventually become. It's not sounding weird anymore. No, it's it's people are saying a lot of it. Yeah, I do think that um, this is the two biggest artists we've ever seen beef in hip hop. I yeah. think even the Big Beast before Drake is the most popular rapper of all time. Yeah. And Kendrick is one of. Yes. And so I think that this is monumental for a bunch of different reasons. Mm -hmm. But I I just want to see how this is going to change how we view all of these artists going forward. I think that people are viewing Drake differently, of course. I think Kendrick is mostly being viewed the same. I wonder how that... I don't don't think so. Uh, I think Kendrick is getting an elevation. Elevation, elevation. for sure. But I think people who already thought he was that guy are now feeling validated. Like me. In in, him being that guy. That's me. And I think that he's not losing any points for the allegations that Drake Drake put on him. So I wonder how that's going to grow and change over time. Because I think in the moment, it's like you're more happy about the win than about the allegations. Mm. But I think every time an artist has a new cycle, it comes back up again where Nicki Minaj and her um, husband or Kodak Black and his mm-hmm. thing. So will that be something to happen with Kendrick? I don't think I so. I don't think so. But I, I, I wonder how that changes the landscape because I think that to see someone get like an easy pass from a whole group at once, mm-hmm. that opens a lane for like anybody else to get it. Not anybody else, yeah. obviously. But I think if the internet can like defend him with their chest the way they, they've been mm-hmm. that's gonna be the next frontier because we saw Kendrick duel with R. Kelly which is kind of crazy but we yeah. saw him duel with R. Kelly and say if, if R. Kelly's music goes my music goes <laughs> which is wild it's insane but there was a little bit of extra to that because he was like this mm-hmm. black artist being held to a standard that somebody like Ozzy Osbourne and, and is the, not being held to and this is a, the point I'm making is I think Kendrick has opened the door for people to feel comfortable defending whoever that person is yeah whoever you like who is "Quote unquote cancelable," you still at the end of this feel cool like Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. He didn't change that. It's still like, okay, yeah, I, I'm so cool to like him. So I'm interested to see how that goes and who's going to be the next Kendrick Lamar in that sense. Okay, who does something a little iffy and everyone goes music yeah, bangs though. So okay, so in, in my in our closing uh, moments here, I will say Kendrick Lamar top five legitimately. Yeah, yeah, legitimately top five in the history. He's, he's got to be this win. In this beef is like gargantuan. Mm-hmm. This would be like if Nas beat Jay Z and they went like in a, a diss battle, like like on a stage. <laughs> Some people said Nas won. Um, I would say Nas won. Ether is. I would say Ether was bit better mm-hmm. than Takeover, but that one's more debatable. This is mm-hmm. like again, unless you're delusional, Kendrick killed him. <laughs> he killed him, and he probably might even might have genuinely damaged his mm-hmm. like career. Oh, he did. He did right? already, yeah. And this is getting to a level of like, um, is he, did he, did he uh, just J- Ja Rule him? 
basically. Did he just hit him with the Ja Rule and Myrtle ink? <sighs> that's where we're that's on, that's on, what we're looking forward to on, now. Only time will tell, yeah, man. That's only what we're time looking will at, tell. We're looking at now because basically we'll see when Drake is mm-hmm. gearing up to release just new songs. Like genuine new Drake songs. releases surprise projects from now on. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, because then you're able to kind of dodge the uh, the conversation yeah, and all that Drake, type of shit. Drake not not doing no rollouts ever again. Yeah. Man. So, <laughs> but that's that's a genuine change to no, his, no. his career. And I would say Drake should probably stop getting in battles with people who are just obviously better lyricists than him. Someone tell him that. Someone tell him because <laughs> he is losing those. Yeah. Listen, I'm excited for Kendrick's album coming up. I want to thank everyone for watching. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I'm excited for the new album because I this album has to be coming at this point. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. Kendrick had this is, has 24 songs. Yeah, just put like even if he doesn't have like a, a full True Blue album, just com- just put a little compliment compilation together. Trust me, people are gonna love it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited for the new Kendrick project. Thank everyone for watching. Of course, subscribe to us on YouTube at Album Mode on YouTube. On our way to 5,000, make sure you like this video, share with your people, leave us a comment. Simple. Let's know who won. Drake or Kendrick mm-hmm. in the comments let us know I, what do you think our fans th- think one who do you think they think one I, I think our fans think Kendrick yeah, won yeah they think Kendrick won but I've seen crazier things I've so. seen the delusions online delusions of grandeur mm-hmm. I don't understand you just like just be like you're just honest <laughs> with oneself please listen to me people out there just be honest with yourself mm-hmm. just think just just like Allow your brain to just process the information properly. Yeah, it's it's okay. And just think, okay, who won this? Seriously. And for you to say, Drake, I don't where is the killing blow? Where is the where is the way where is the time that he got mm-hmm. like the masses in his corner? Like that didn't even happen. Yeah. There was never a point in time where like, oh, Drake is killing him. Except for at the very, 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 very beginning. We're like, oh, when is he gonna drop? When is he gonna drop? That's it. Other than that, it has been a tidal wave of Kendrick Lamar and mm. it it just never stopped. Yeah. It got yeah. to the point where the NBA is playing not like us. That is insane. In, in the playoffs. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> that shit's going to play in the NBA Finals. <sighs> NBA Finals? Yeah. That, that's going to be in the championship team's, like, recap video. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, with that said, I don't see how Drake ever won this. But, if you somehow, some way have bought into the OVO-ness, you're one of the people that didn't get hollowed out of the fandom and you're still hanging on to those owl legs please put it in the comments i would love to see that i would love to see that i would love to see you say something like that um but yeah thank you everybody for tuning into sound Bites, the portion of the album podcast where we're talking about the music the culture and the internet and how those three things combine i'm so happy we have this portion of the podcast mm-hmm. I want you everybody to make sure you follow us on the interwebs at Album Mode Pod on Twitter at Album Mode Pod on Instagram at Album Mode just here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're commenting. Make sure you like this video. And Adriel, make sure you know yourself and know your worth. Later days.